Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will have a more detailed look in clipped child layers and introduce clipping layers. This video is part 3 of Demystifying Layers video series. If you haven't watched the first two parts, check them out. Link to them will be in the description. In the previous video, we looked into clipped child layers. As you might remember, Adding child layers to a layer will affect only the pixels of the parent. Before introducing clipping layers, let's first have a look at the practical use of a clipped child layer. Let me enable this beautiful image and add a circle to the document by using the ellipse tool. A quick tip, you can press and hold the shift key to make a perfect circle. The circle I just added is below the image, so let's move it up in the layer stack so we can see it. Excellent. If I now move the image layer with the tree inside the circle as a clipped child, guess what will happen? It will be clipped inside the circle. This is because the image layer, which we made a child layer of the circle, will only replace the contents of its parent, in this case the circle resulting in what we see right now. If I add more content or pixels to the parent, the new content will get replaced by this child image. Let me show that by painting with a brush on the parent. If I select the brush tool and start painting on the parent layer, you will see that this is not working as the parent layer was a vector layer. Affinity added a child pixel layer for us. I need to convert the vector layer into a pixel layer in order to brush on it. Normally, we can use the rasterize function for this. However, if I rasterize the current layer, it will not only rasterize the parent, but will also include the child modifications. So let me undo that and temporarily move the image out so I only have the vector layer. I can now rasterize the circle. As you can see, it is now a pixel layer. Perfect. Now, let me put back the tree image as a clipped child. As the parent is now a pixel layer, I can use the paintbrush to paint on it. Let me also switch my brush to something more simple. Now, you can see, because I'm adding content to the parent layer, the pixels painted get replaced by the clipped child. In fact, this feels much like a mask, doesn't it? So in theory, you can mask out images by using this feature. A big difference with a mask is that the color of the parent pixels have no effect. I actually paint it with black. I can show this if I move the child out of it. In a regular mask layer, black would have been blocked. When using parent and clipped child layers, clipping or masking is only applied to the actual content. So if you want to mask out an area, you will need to remove the pixel content from the area you want to mask out. If I wanted to remove the areas I painted in, I can use the Erase tool. Even though this works quite well, it feels unnatural. Because the main subject in this setup is actually the image and not the circle. And this is where clipping layers come into play. Let me move out the image so we can have the circle and the image again on separate layers. Now, instead of making the image a clipped child of the circle, we can use the clipping layer functionality to tell Affinity to clip a layer to a specified layer. I can drag the circle layer on top of the icon of the image layer and you notice it will show a marker beside the icon indicating that this will be a clipping layer. Once a layer has been applied as a clipping layer, you will also see this clip icon on its thumbnail. And we get the same result as before. Let me quickly also add the previous parent-child layer combination for comparison. In a sense, a clipping layer behaves the opposite of a clipped child, but with the same result. Instead of saying, clip this layer to the parent, we say, clip the parent to this layer. The parent gets clipped, whereas with the clipped child, the child gets clipped. 
That is the main difference. It is a matter of perspective from which the clipping will be applied to. Just like with a parent of a clipped child, the clipping is determined by the contents of the clipping layer. I can now paint with any color on the clipping layer to reveal more of the parent. And just like before, I can use the erase tool to decrease the clipped area. Besides adding pixel layers or vector layers as clipping layers, we can also add adjustments, masks and live filters as clipping layers. Let me add a Gaussian Blur live filter and move it so it becomes a clipping layer. I will then duplicate the Gaussian Blur and move it as a clipped child layer in the layer below, so we can see if there is a difference between the two. As the adjustment and the live filters apply to the whole canvas, it will not clip anything from the parent, but the effect will be applied to the parent just like with a clipped child. There are some interesting differences between clipping layers and clipped child layers. To demonstrate the differences, I'm going to use the tree image as a parent and rasterize the circle as a mask. So let's remove what we don't need and set up the layers side by side. First, I will set up the parent with a clipping layer and then do the parent with a clipped child. Let's also name them for clarity. You will notice that Affinity will show clipping layer thumbnails besides the layer thumbnail in the layers panel when the parent is collapsed. Ok, let's resize and reposition them. To show you the first big difference, I'm going to add two adjustments to both of them. First an HSO adjustment to shift the colors, followed by a recolor adjustment. I will also duplicate and move these two duplicates to the top layer as clipping layers. And we immediately see the first major difference. It is the order how they are processed. The clipped child layers are processed just like the rest of the layers, from the bottom up, so the HSL is applied first, followed by the recolor. With clipped layers, processing is done from the top up, to the bottom. So in this case, first the recolor is applied followed by the HSL adjustment and finally the mask is applied. This is important to know, especially when you apply multiple clipping layers and could be definitely confusing, especially if you're mixing with clipped child layers. I think the reason for this is because the processing starts from the perspective of the parent. If I swap the recolor adjustment with the HSL adjustment in the clipping layer, we get the same result as the clipped child. The other big difference is that clipping layers cannot be grouped or have any child layers themselves. For example, I can group the HSL and the recolor in the clipped child. When I try the same in the clipping layers, Affinity won't let me, as I cannot even select two clipping layers. If I right click on a clipping layer, you see the context menu is not the same as with clipped child layers and does not contain the group option. Now, the final big difference is how the clipping layers and clipped child layers are processed internally by Affinity, especially regarding masking. I will try to explain why this is happening, but first let me show you what I mean. So. On the right we have the layer with the mask applied as a clipping layer. On the left the mask is applied as a clipped child. It looks like there is no difference, but let me zoom in and if you look very closely you can definitely see a difference. The clipping layer version is much more smoother and more natural. I hope you were able to see the difference, but to make the difference even more evident I will zoom out and then add a Gaussian blur to the mask, so the difference will become more apparent. Ok, here comes the difference I mentioned earlier. In the clipped child mask I was able to add a live Gaussian blur filter. However, when I duplicate the blur layer and move it to the clipping layer mask, I cannot add it as a child layer. As mentioned, clipping layers cannot have child layers themselves. So, 
there is no way for me to blur the circle mask. If I put the Gaussian blur line filter below the mask, everything will be blurred. And if I put it above the mask, the content or the parent will be blurred, but not the mask as this is below the Gaussian blur filter. And as you know by now, the processing hierarchy is from the top to the bottom. So the mask gets applied after the blur, resulting in a sharp mask. Let me remove this Gaussian blur adjustment and do this differently. Now, instead of copying the Gaussian blur, I will remove the live blur layer. I can now apply a regular blur to the mask from the filters menu. Now that we have blurred our mask, I can duplicate this mask and move it to the layer above as a clipping layer. But before doing that, let me remove the old mask first. Now I can move the layer as a clipping layer. Awesome! We did get the same mask, but of course we need to move its position. Let me also resize both layers so I get a bit more space between them. Before comparing them, let's also make sure the layer processing is the same. I need to make sure that the clipped child mask is also applied as the last layer in the parent, so I will move it to the top. Now we have an exact copy. There is no denying that there is a difference. To make the difference stronger, I will add a curves layer and adjust the green channel and you definitely see the green halo. If I duplicate this curves adjustment layer and move it to the top layer as a clipping layer, it does affect the color in a similar way, but without the green halo. It looks like the mask applied as clipping layers have a much natural result. Let me try to explain what is happening. It has all to do on how the layers are processed internally by Affinity for blending. I believe the clipping layers are applied first before blending, whereas clipped child layer masks are applied after they have been blended in. To demonstrate that, I'm going to hide the clipping layer and duplicate the clipped child. Let me move this to the right so we have two exact copies next to each other. Now, on the layer on the right, I'm going to rearrange this as a group instead of a parent with child layers. I'll move all the clipped child layers out and put them at the top of the image. I can now group them together with the image and we get the exact same result. Child layers are a different way of grouping. Check out the previous video if you want to know more about that. Now. Notice that the group has the blend mode set to pass through. Let's expand the group and see what is happening. Because the blend mode of the group is set to pass through, the pixel layer is blended first and then the adjustments and the mask are applied to it. When I set the blend mode of the group to normal, the issue is fixed. Why? Because now the adjustments and the mask are applied to the image first. After these have been applied, the resulting image is blended in, which fixed the green halo. The group with normal blend mode has exactly the same end result as the clipping layer version. Quite interesting, isn't it? This exactly proves that clipping layers are processed first before blending. Now the cool part is that we can fix the mask bleed or the green halo in the clipped child version. Why do I want to fix it? If we can use clipping layers. Well, because I prefer to use masks as clipped child layers, as in my honest opinion gives more flexibility. As I showed earlier, child layers have no restriction and I can group and apply adjustments to them. So what is the trick in fixing it? Well, it is actually quite simple and super easy. We just need to change the blend mode of the mask to erase. Amazing, isn't it? Why this works is a mystery, but I'm guessing the erase blend mode forces the mask to be applied before blending. Now we have the exact same result. Time to wrap up this video. 
in the next and final video, we will have a deeper look in working with clipping layers. I hope you liked this video and found it interesting. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is a good time to do that if you like to see more interesting videos about Affinity Photo. Thank you so much for watching. Keep safe and until the next video.